We love Japanese knives, as you probably know, they're nice, they're sharp, but they could be a little bit more fragile compared to those beefy western style knives. What many people don't realize is that the shape of the edge has such great effect on how tough the edge is and also how long it holds the edge as well. Today, we'll show you how to make this knife tough enough so it can make saving throws for the butternut squash. Alrighty, let's talk about edge geometry. There are mainly three different types of edge geometry. One is nice and straight, very nice straight triangle. Second is a concave. If you look at your stray razor, if you have one at home, it's how it's sharpened. They're very thin, gets very sharp, but it could be very fragile. Another one, it's very convex, like this. If you have a axe, take it out, look at him. It's got very thick convexity to it. So the edge becomes very, very tough. Just wanna point out though, no Japanese knife makers are trying to make this perfect straight flat angles. Almost all those knife makers are trying to make at least slight convexity just because it gives you a little bit more toughness around the edge. This balance out the uh, fragile nature of Japanese knives or the Japanese steel. This type of grind is called Hamaguri grind. Hamaguri is named after this very popular and tasty clam fish uh, from Japan. They call it Hamaguri grind because that the little nice convex grind looks resembles to that shellfish. So today I'm going to show you how to maintain the original hamaguri or the convex grind on the edge what the knife makers intended or to modify it whether you make it more pronounced convex or you could even thin it from there. Okay so today these are the gears I'm going to use. First so this is Naniwa Hibiki 1000 grit. This is very hard vitrified stone. This will tell me how pronounced the convex or the hamaguri bevel there is. And this kind of works as litmus test for, you know, for those of you who remember back in the junior high, you know, the thing. This works like a litmus paper. This is another stone that I primarily use today. Knife for 220 grit stone. This will do most of the heavy lifting of grinding today. This comes very, very handy. Before I get in onto the sharpening, I always like to wrap the handle in a plastic wrap and this masking tape so that the knife handle doesn't get yucky. Especially for the handle like these, the Japanese magnolia wood handles. I have this really nicely flan Naniwa Hibiki stone. This is, again, it's like litmus paper. This will tell you how convex your knife is. You can tell by lifting a knife or rotating a knife a little bit to see how convex the knife is but also you can very simply pressure very lightly in the middle of the knife and back and forth and it tells you where it's grinding so here it kind of became a little bit more smoky along the edge here this is where it touched on the stone. And if you look closely, it does not reach all the way to the edge. So what I'm going to do is go back down on the stone and keep these pressure fingers as close to the edge as possible. And also the hand that you're holding the knife handle, right or left, whichever, you want to twist kind of a little bit on the knife lift the spine up ever a tiny bit so that it touches just along the edge. Then do back and forth. By doing so, it does reach to the edge a little bit more. 
okay? So this is how you can tell how convex the knife is. Now, what I like to do from here is to do actually heavy lifting. So I'm going to change the stone. So what I like to do generally is I actually like to start from the very edge. Very edge, that means that the, the thing that, that I just did earlier, putting the pressure just along the edge and have the spine up tiny bit. Keep adding the pressure with my thumb here and keep applying the pressure on these two fingers. Do this, okay? Basically, all you wanna do is to focus just along the edge first. For this, when you're working on a tip, you still want to increase the angle a tiny bit, but just follow the natural curve of the curve of this bevel. The way you can tell the knife is touched on the stone is that to make sure there's no gap. Like you change the angle and there's no gap in between the stone or the knife. As you can see on this here, especially at the tip part, this part has been scratched and sharpened, but this hasn't, right? It remains the same color. So I sharpen about two to three millimeters just along the edge here, all the way to the end. Well, it's, this is a part of thinning process as well, so you want to sharpen them either until you raise actually the burr from the other side or sharpen them until there is no original blade road left. Now, instead of press, pressing it just very close to the edge, I'm gonna change my finger position into a little bit more like middle of the bevel. So it depends on how, it, how you want that convex to be, like either it's really extreme or thin. If you wanna make it very strong convex, I would do it with three different parts. If you're gonna make it a little bit more thinner convex, I would probably do two different parts. Okay, so I'm going to now apply the pressure in the middle kind of center, middle part of this bevel here and work on it. And I'm not going to add as much pressure, like this torsion pressure, not as much as I did, I was doing when I was sharpening just along the edge. Because this is more like freehand type of uh, work, um, checking the bevel or where it's scratching or where it's grinding, uh, it's very important. So I would urge you to check um, every probably like five to 10 strokes so that you know where you're grinding. Here, if you look, um, the, the part that I sharpen has increased. So it's, it's, it's kind of wider for sure. But if you look closely, there is a place that's like right here. It's not been touched, I guess, on the stone. So as along the, this bevel. So what I'm going to do now is to basically sharpen. So it's a three different steps or making a convex. So first I started from the, just along the edge and I worked on the middle part. Then I'm going to sharpen the top part. So here's a little bit of a um, tip. If you want to make your knife thinner than how it was before, work the middle, the central part longer, resulting in making the convex a little bit more flatter. But if you want to make the convex a little bit more exaggerated, work the first part just along the edge more and do the rest a little bit more less. I'm going to apply my pressure just above this, they call a shinogi line or the where the primary bevel starts. So last section here, I'm actually putting a lot of pressure just above 
the bevel right here, but I'm not adding or subtracting or I'm not doing anything with my right hand. I'm just holding on to it. I'm, I'm just letting my handle rest in my hand. As you can see, it's all like, as you can see, whole bevel has been, I guess, been ground or touched all the way. I did it in three sections, right? From the edge, very edge, in the middle, and the top part. So I kept the nice convexity, but also sharpened it very evenly. So that's the shaping. That's really important when you are making a convex, maintain it or to change a little bit of profile on the convexity this 220 stone or whatever the coarsest stone that you have is your go-to stone if i were to make this convexity again a little bit more thinner i would work a lot more on the middle part the second part if i were to make this convex a little bit more stronger i would do stronger on the first just along the edge and very lightly on the other part but it is always important to do bisections and also to make sure whole bevel has been ground. So basically, if you're just doing one angle, you're making either making the edge too blunt or you're making edge too thin. I, I sharp, resharpened one of the knives uh, pretty recently that, the, uh, that was a very good example. He was trying to thin the knife, but he was sharpening on just one angle Result in this primary bevel to be very, very narrow. They didn't follow and try to work on this the third or the uh, bevel side so that it was like making, keeping this line the same, but you're working on just along the edge. So it was like getting narrower and narrower. When you're doing the second, second side, you can definitely do it with, you know, keeping your knife on your right hand like this and do this. Aesthetically speaking, only aesthetically speaking, it's better to do switch the hand. So I do change my hand when I'm actually working on the second side, but you could do it at the same principle, right? Basically, you want to just sharpen along the edge first, then lower it down a little bit on second, and the third, make sure you are just sharpening the bevel side. You could do it like this, you could do it like this. It, it shouldn't matter functionally. As I said, functionally, I found it's a little bit more difficult to make it a little bit even with the knife going this way, like in the looks wise. But as far as the function goes, it should not matter. Make sure that you use the coarsest stone, like 220, 400, uh, those stones to make it into the sh desired shape because it is going to be very difficult once you move up to the higher grit it will not do much of the heavy lifting anymore from here on i'm going to go up on different grits like this 220 grit i created a shape if you are trying to make the bevel looks nice trying to find the stone that is like Knife for your 1000 stone, that's actually really nice and soft. I'll show you how this works. I'll do the very similar thing, but I'm not worrying too much about, especially when I'm working on a soft stone. Softer stone, it's like a cushion, right? When you have bean cushion, like super micro, like tiny ones that will like fit you all around them, right? So it's like that softer sharpening stones wraps around the bevel a little bit more nicer. So I don't have to change much like an angle this time. Like I could change it a little bit, but this soft stone with the really nice mud wraps the edge really nicely so that the uh, this part change the color pretty much entirely. If there is a section that is not touching, I could just change the angle change the little pressure point also this stone is great to um, take a lot of deeper scratches out 
it's very muddy stone, so probably those mud uh, gets into a little bit more smaller uh, scratches so that it blends them very good. Ish. Ish. So it gets nice and even. The, that was kind of end of the shaping the bevels. Don't forget to sharpen after this though. Sharpening by mean putting the last edge, like 15 degrees or 20 degrees, whatever you want to put, because leaving it as the clamshell grind is pretty fragile. Always, always put the last 15 degree edge on them. So that was how to make a hamaguri grind or maintain a hamaguri grind. Don't forget to put the last edge on because that is a very essential part of sharpening. So hamaguri grind, now you should be able to cut through squash or some root vegetables like yams without a problem. But don't forget, it's not never good to cut into bones or frozen food. So if you want to learn more specialized techniques, check other videos somewhere there. Leave the comment below, we're more than happy to help you out, and I'm out. But what pe- But what the- Great affair! Today, I'm going to show you how to sharpen tough enough so that it goes to the saving throws of- I have no idea what I'm talking about. Just leave it on the air. We're more than half.